We have Patrick and Bot Press. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, guys. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. That's good. That's a tough. That's a tough act to follow. They had digital humans, but you know, I'm sure you guys are gonna knock it out of the park here. So, yeah. Tell me a little bit about yourselves and what the what, you know what you're all about. Yeah. Um, so we are all already live on stage. Yeah, the world yeah. is watching billions of people. Yeah, great. What were your next words, man? Yeah, great. So hi, everyone. Um, uh, and I would like to thank uh, Conversation Design Institute for having Patrick and I for the next four to five minutes. Uh, I'm Dalina Lotis. I'm a developer advocate at BotPress, and I would be your co-presenter for this talk. Um, I would be in the chat to respond to uh, your question or inquiry or whatever you like to ask about BotPress. Um, also, I would take the time to promote another talk that's going to be tomorrow. So tomorrow, it's uh, Sylvain Perron, the CEO of BotPress, will be presenting a short talk. So don't miss that one. Uh, without further ado, um, the speaker of this talk is named Patrick Amling. Patrick is a growth developer at BotPress. Uh, he is always looking to be in the place where the change happened. Uh, so previously he was in Taiwan uh, working for his own company. Uh, he, jo he joined BotPress because he really believed in the conversational AI that revolutionized the way we interact, as we see in the previous talk. It was uh, insane. So uh, the floor is yours, Patrick. All right. Thanks, Dali. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully this will work on the first try. Yep, I think that works. OK, so the talk today is putting the conversational designer in the pilot seat. And uh, why, why this subject in particular? So I'm fairly new to the chatbot industry. I've been here uh, for not even half a year. And before that, I had uh, a background in e-commerce. And I was thinking, if I'm about to present to lots of conversation designers, um, what could I come up with that would be interesting? And I think I should have, I, I should just tap into my background, and that's what I did. So the, the very important thing that I noticed, um, or maybe not important, but very glaring thing that I noticed when I transited to the chatbot industry is how uh, mature the, the Shopify, like the, the, the e-commerce industry is compared to the chatbot industry. I think we're still in earlier stages. And uh, what I mean by that is if, if you try uh, five different chatbot, chatbot makers, uh, you might have 15 different ways of doing things. Uh, there's not uh, not everything is firmly in place on like what is the best way to do something, uh, and, and it shows when you look at the products. Um, just to make this maybe a bit more clear, uh, and why the comparison works, uh, this is the uh, this is the navigation for a Shopify shop, and uh, I, I highlighted on the right a few roles. I don't know. Uh, you can probably see my my mouse. Yeah. Um, OK, so there are a few roles like logistics, product manager, sales, store manager, customer service developers. And notice how everybody can just go into their own kind of silo, uh, their functionality, and, and work from there. And uh, so someone from logistics, for instance, they can do everything in orders, and they don't really need a developer most of the time. And the same is, is true for pretty much everybody. And uh, having tried a few chatbot platforms, I, I discovered that you often need a developer, whereas uh, in, in an e-commerce setting, you would not have needed it for, for uh, that vital of a functionality. Um, so for this to happen, uh, for, for you, you to be able to silo everything, you really need to have uh, a lot of features, like 95% uh, that, that will be covered, like 95% of the cases, and those don't require developers. Uh, so examples in, in uh, e-commerce would be like orders that can be canceled, refunded, tagged. Uh, you never need a developer for that uh, unless you're doing something very, very strange. And I feel like in, in chatbots, we also need to have this kind of thing. Um, another analogy would be like site working uh, on every technology stack. So when you when you go on a website and you see uh, you want to shop, 
uh, whether you're shopping on mobile or on desktop, maybe the add to cart button is going to look different. Maybe it's going to be in a different place, uh, but the functionality is going to be there. You expect it to work. And when you create a new product, uh, you want the add to cart functionality to work every time. Um, and uh, ready, -made, ready made payment solutions uh, that work everywhere. Uh, there's no reason chatbot platforms would not have this. As a matter of fact, uh, you can run e-commerce off uh, off a chatbot directly, and you can even not sell any products on your e-commerce platform. So the two are very similar. It's just the the um, the user interface, uh, user experience, which differs. Um, so in other words, a mature platform should have a very high feature coverage, uh, works in most cases, and otherwise be extensible by devs. And that's what I want to talk about today. So uh, at BotPress, I, I discovered there's a few things that I think we do really well. And I just wanted to share those things. And hopefully, we can uh, just improve the chatbot industry, just move it forward a little bit, just one step. And that would be great. OK, so a little bit of history. Um, so our founder used to be a CTO and uh, at, at another tech company. and. Uh, while he was working, at some point, he he had some repetitive tasks that he wanted to uh, solve. And sorry. And um, while he was doing that, he discovered that he could uh, just keep doing it, uh, make uh, release the platform, and uh, make it available open source. And he got other developers on board, on board to uh, help him uh, work on the project. And they moved it forward. And at the very beginning, the, the platform was really made by developers and for themselves, so, so for developers as well. And uh, eventually, they were thinking, mm, let's try to expand our market a little. And uh, they decided to build a product which was, um, quote unquote, for grandmothers. And uh, at that point, they, they spent time and they, they released it. I wasn't in BotPress, so I, this is just hearsay for me. But um, they came up with a product that could work for, for everybody. And then they tried it. And then they realized that, in reality, you need developers uh, always at some point. Uh, so you can't just shut them out. So what they did was they took the original product, they took the new one, and they mixed it together so that the developer-friendly parts are, are the original. And uh, they, they uh, took advantage of the new easy functionality. And so. Uh, this kind of um, this is kind of evolution uh, designed by evolution rather than than design, and it yields some very interesting uh, design decisions. And I, I think BotPress is interesting for this. It's also open source, so uh, anybody can check it out and improve the product. All right. So what I'm going to do today is uh, we don't have enough time to just build a whole chatbot. So I went ahead and built a template. Uh, that you'll be able to try out at home. Uh, but I think you can just follow my talk. Uh, if you want to uh, circle back and try it at home, you can do so later. I'm just going to show you quickly how to do that. Um, so there's only two things you need to download. Uh, the first is the BotPress download, uh, the BotPress executable here. So depending on your platform, if you pick Mac, Windows, Linux, I picked Mac because I'm, I'm on a Mac. Uh, I would just avoid these three unless you're a developer. Uh, it'll be a bit more complicated for non-developers. Um, so once that's downloaded, uh, you need to download also the template here. And I've conveniently downloaded the two. And um, once you download the executable, all you have to do is uh, unzip it and open the folder. And there is this file here called BP for BotPress, not British Petroleum. And uh, double clicking that will open uh, this, which looks kind of intimidating. And uh, unfortunately, maybe it's a little bit too intimidating. But the, um, the important thing is the last uh, sentence here, uh, which is uh, localhost 3000. And uh, it might be a different URL. It might be the same. You just have to open this URL. And that will open it right here. And then here, you just come up with some credentials. Um, repeating myself again, but this is open source software. So it's, it's running locally on your computer. So uh, you can use whatever password. It doesn't really matter as long as you're just, uh, so long as you're uh, not sharing this. 
Okay, so once BotPress is opened, um, you go here, click Create Bot, or just hover, and import existing, and then select the file, um, the file, this one, the .tgz, and that will that will open, uh, that will load the template that I built. All right, so once that's done, oh, give me a sec. Once that's done, I'm just going to quickly show you the main flow UI. And that's just to get an overview of how the BotPress logic works. So I'm going to open it up here. Quick check. Oh, yeah. um, OK, so this is the main workflow. So it's not too extravagant. Um, I've seen something similar in other places as well. Um, so basically, the way a flow works, or the, the flow of the chatbot works, is it starts in the main flow. Uh, there are multiple different flows. These are just ways of organizing your, uh, your flows or your code, if you think about it like that. And it starts with the start uh, node right here. And generally speaking, it goes from left to right. So um, you start here, and then you would go here, or you would go there. And then from here, you would always go here. And then when there's no uh, links like this uh, and there's text, it, it just means go to the start node of uh, a subflow. So in this case, if I click this Rover Pictures, it brings me to this page right here. Um, what every box represents, we call it a node. I'm not sure if that's standard. Um, when you click a node, uh, you have three tabs here, uh, one which is on enter, on receive, um, these two are just for displaying things, uh, can be texts, images, video, whatever, uh, buttons as well, and transitions. Uh, transitions is what decides uh, where a user will be sent to uh, after leaving this node. And, oh, yes. And the final thing uh, is the natural language understanding right here. And this is, this is very standard. Uh, so it's just a list of intents. Yeah, you can create more intents. In my case, I only have one just to keep it simple. And utterances with uh, slots uh, and tags. Oh, I'm sorry. Too. Yeah, so uh, Patrick is a uh, call. Hey, you ever seen a phone call? Sorry, very important. That. Wait, wait, who was it? Who Those landlines, they're horrible. <laughs> Everyone wants to know who it was, Patrick. I, I just picked it up and, and hung up immediately. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I hope it would not call again. Probably you just need to hang up and let the phone there. <laughs> oh my God! No, um, next time you pick we'll, it up we'll and, and, we, call and, again. And, and you may, and you put it live, and we're all going to talk to him on the on the uh, at the festival. So yeah. oh no, it's, it's not for me. It's for my family. So okay. I'm not sure if I can share that. Oh God! <laughs> oh, wait, oh, it's happening! It's happening, people! It's happening! Wait, answer the phone, Patrick. You have to answer the phone. Yeah, but probably the the phone call would be in French. So anybody like all right, I disconnected it, <laughs> <laughs> but it might ring downstairs. Hopefully, it won't be too loud. Okay, um, take it away. Sure. Let me just... oh, or not? Uh... Yeah, yeah. Just to uh, just to, okay. Uh, Sorry about that. Yeah, just to know a little bit. Uh, who knows about utterance and entity and uh, intent? Because um, I just want to know if people in the audience know what are those three. Uh, Three things. So please, in the chat, uh, response and Patrick will explain what are those three, uh, three things. So yeah, Patrick, you can go ahead. Yeah, sorry, I was reading yeah. the chat. Uh, the cuckoo clocks. If they all go, uh, there's more in front. If they all go at the same time, it's gonna be uh, impossible to have any kind of talk. So <laughs> yeah, I need a virtual assistant to answer my phone. Um, okay, so where was I? Um, oh yeah, so this is fairly standard right here. Um, right, it's just uh, utterances and then with tagged slots. Uh, so you should be quite at home here. Uh, so that's it for like just a basic, oh, sorry. Just oh, the yeah. basic intro. Yeah. Hey, Patrick. Uh, how that works. Uh, could you put your screen bigger? Just uh, we see. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, please. Uh, I'll try this. I, I hope it won't be too big because uh, when I go into flows and I open the inspector, it might. That'd be difficult to see. Great. Okay, so now I'll just quickly give you a demo. Uh, I need to train the chatbot first because uh, we are using NLU, natural language understanding. Hopefully everybody knows. 
Um, and I'm, I'm clicking the button right here, which is the emulator. And I'm just going to type uh, what is the latency between Earth and Mars. Uh, the latency being um, the time it takes for a signal to reach uh, another one. And we have a response right here. I'll just type hi. We get a greeting, and then it tells us what it can do, and which I should have done earlier. But this, this bot uh, basically shows images from uh, taken by the Mars rovers, uh, in, in, in part, in, uh, sorry, specifically the Curiosity Mars rover. And um, it shows it for a particular day. So when you say, yes, show me pictures, it will ask for a date, March 1st, 2015. Um, oh, okay, no pictures on that day. I'm gonna try another date. Most days have pictures. And that's a wonderful picture from Mars. And then it brings us back to the main flow. So this is what the, uh, the conversation does. It's very simple, uh, but I've, I've hopefully isolated all the edge cases and made sure uh, it never fails. Um, so that's why it might look uh, a little bit more complicated. Um, okay. And now I'm going to go to my first topic. Wonderful. Um, okay, so the first one is offloading. Um, I'm always looking to take tasks that I'm not respond that I shouldn't be responsible for, and giving it to other people. And this is also kind of the name of the the presentation is hopefully taking all the things that conversational designers uh, don't want to do and could not do, and offloading offloading it to other people. And the first thing that I really like that I, I really liked about BotPress is the Q&A functionality. So notice how earlier I was showing you the flows and you have all of this conversation here. Well, in our emulator here, um, the first question that I asked is what is the latency between Earth and Mars? And it's not found here. And that's intentional. And the reason for that is because we wanted to make sure that um, it's easy to add questions and it won't break the flow of a conversation. Uh, this is something I hope I see across the board in, in every uh, in every chatbot maker uh, because it, it's just so useful. They just have the peace of mind that someone can come here, uh, add questions, edit questions, and something, and your conversation won't break. That's really the wonderful thing. Um, so this here is the uh, question that I asked. And you can see I have uh, multiple different instances of these questions or utterances. Uh, that's because it uses NLU, so I could try something in between uh, and it would work, uh, hopefully. If it doesn't, then we'd have to add uh, question alternatives to improve it. Um, and so it's very simple. It's just a bunch of questions. Uh, you could have uh, answer alternatives as well. And um, basically, there's, there's two roles uh, for this. There's the developers who are probably going to be tasked with g grabbing all the information uh, from an existing repository. Um, and there's also uh, a knowledge workers, uh, like, like for instance, sales or customer service who want to solve their immediate problem. Um, so the way it works for developers is you just have to, well, ideally you just, you just add one question and then you just click export to JSON. You have this file, you give it to your developer and you say, just uh, just use this format, send me something new with all our existing questions. And all they have to do is import it and it will just appear here. And so that's simple, uh, as simple as can be. And again, it won't, it won't break the bot. Um, the next thing is here, add question. Uh, you can just uh, add a question like this. Uh, this you can, you can give rights to customer service people or sales teams or, or whoever else to just ask questions uh, right here. I, I think um, another similarity between chatbots and e-commerce is that it's an ongoing thing. And um, especially like if anybody here has done customer service, uh, you would know that uh, there's always like events or product malfunctions or some something is going to happen that's going to generate a lot of questions uh, at, at a certain point in time. And that's always going to keep changing. 
And it's good to have a place that you can just give rights to a certain type of user to come and make modifications. Uh, so hopefully I've made my point. <laughs> All right. Um, now the last thing uh, I want to just quickly mention is there's this convert to intent button right here. Um, so if if some if a question becomes uh, kind of engrossing, like people really want to know specifically, like right now, what is the latency between Mars and Earth, and what is the maximum, what is the minimum, uh, what date, uh, what what is the latency at what date? Um, you can always convert to intent later. So it, it really encourages uh, iterative uh, design here, and and really everybody like collaborative uh, participation. Um, yeah, so that's it for the Q&A. Um, my next slide is about create once, handle everywhere. And this is kind of like buttons for e-commerce. Like it should always work on every platform, uh, ideally. Um, I, I think every chatbot platform should be doing this. Uh, let me show you a quick example. So within flows, um, oh, actually right here we see the buttons. So this is exactly what I want to show you. So would you like to look at pictures from rovers? Uh, yes, show me pictures and no test out the NLU first. Um, so this is nothing extraordinary, just like this. Um, but what's wonderful is it also works uh, by default on every other platform. And I think whenever you, you um, on, on a chatbot platform, you give a choice like this, it should always be cross-platform by default. And sure, like make it extendable, allow developers to, uh, write whatever content they want, but whatever you include, I think it should always be cross-platform. And um, of course, everybody here, well, everybody probably knows you can't put buttons in text messages and for sure not in phone calls like I just received. Um, so the way it's handled uh, would be, instead of writing buttons, it would list the choices with like a number like one and two, and then you can easily have NLU just figure out, uh, is somebody trying to type this or have they just typed one or two? Or on the phone, you just press one or two on, on the dial. Um, so, so yeah, that's it. So with uh, with BotPress here, we just have this node here, which is, um, we call it a skill because it, it's uh, integrated functionality. And when you click edit skill, let me just show you how it looks like. Uh, we just ask uh, the question here inside a message, and then we can provide uh, choices with a message and value. And uh, the last thing I want to show you, uh, well, not last thing, but something I want to show you here is disable free text. So by default, right here, we don't allow them to uh, click anything. Uh, so if you would want to do a suggestion, uh, the default options wouldn't work. Uh, so how do you do suggestions? Well, there's two ways to do it. Uh, one is you don't you don't do suggestions. You just always offer like an other option. And uh, in that case, when, when someone clicks other, then you just parse, uh, you, you just do natural language understanding on uh, or intent classification on whatever the user uh, responds. Uh, but another way of doing it, and uh, I don't know what people are doing in the industry, uh, but I wanted to know for myself um, was in here, you could just, um, re-enable free text. Of course, actually, just, just to come back. So obviously, this won't work on every platform, but it will work on all the platforms where it's supported. And this is the kind of thing I want to see uh, more, more and more, at least for defaults uh, here. So submit. Um, and then I would go to advanced here, reduce this to 0. And um, OK. so. In case somebody had written something different, just to show you quickly. So if if uh, if it's a phone and there's like three choices, like one, two, or or three for other, and somebody types four accidentally, presumably, um, we'd want uh, we'd want to tell them like, hey, dude, uh, you need to press one, two, or three. And so here we can uh, have. Uh, bot press type something else, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to show you uh, suggestions. Um, so I reduced it to zero retry. So as soon as it fails, uh, that means as soon as it falls outside of uh, one of these buttons, uh, it's going to, right now, it's going to trigger on failure, which is the fallback redirect. But I'm going to change this. I'm going to create a node. 
and I'm going to just call it handle failure just to keep things simple. And instead of sending uh, from fallback redirect, I'm just going to drag and drop to here. And here I'm going to add some transitions. And here I can match the intent over pictures and transition to uh, rover pictures. So what this does is, OK, sorry, like this. Let me zoom out again just for a second. I'm going to move this like this. OK, so now what happens is uh, when we have this choice, a user can type whatever they want. And uh, if it doesn't fall in one of these two choices, we're just going to check for intent. And this didn't work for some reason. OK, now it's working. And if it matches the rover pictures intent, we'll send them to rover pictures. Uh, so like this, we can handle a suggestion. So let me just reset the conversation here and just show you very quickly. I'm going to greet us again because I reset the conversation. Um, and I want to see um, Mars rover pictures. Hopefully, NLU will catch this. Yeah, and it does. Uh, it immediately asks us the date, which is perfect. All right, so that's basically what I wanted to show you for this. Um, I, I hope, even if it's not choice, whatever it is, uh, even like someone recently asked me about date pickers, I think uh, we should have reasonable defaults for date pickers across the board, uh, across every platform, uh, without having to uh, work too hard on this. Um, all right, so my next point is accessibility is key, handling memory. This is very, very tricky. Um, so when, when working with a chatbot, um, especially with a flow like this, you will often, uh, have two kinds. I, I, what I group in two kinds of variables and one is more like the developer, uh, focused variable. And that one is, uh, about, uh, fetching like order information or, um, or grabbing images from a certain sites, uh, doing something like moderately complicated. And then the other type of variable is just a counter, like has something happened before, yes or no. And I don't think we can ever make the first case um, easy for everybody, but the, sec the second case uh, should be easy. And the reason why I believe that is because again, in e-commerce, we have like order tags and product tags, and this can really affect uh, functionality uh, in the end product without it being too complicated. Uh, we, this is all like metadata and generally speaking, people can uh, understand this. Um, and when I'm talking about accessibility, I'm, I'm talking about trying to get all of these cases into the hands of, of most people in, in this case, uh, conversation designers. And I, I'm just going to show you a quick case. It's not ideal, but I think, uh, already it's not that complicated. Um, so if there's one thing that you would want to learn about this in BotPress, uh, if you just want to do a counter, just to check if something has happened. Um, so the way we do it is, so at, at the very beginning of the conversation, uh, we greet and we get a hi here. And this will only happen once. And it only happens once per session because we don't want to greet the user over and over again, uh, or at least not... Uh, not uh, in a forward manner. Um, so all this node does at the very beginning, at the very beginning, sorry, is it just checks if uh, the user has been greeted this session. And if it has, then we just suggest the action. If it hasn't, we greet them. And so it's, it's very, it's very simple. Um, the way it works here, I'm going to open this uh, node inspector, go to transitions. Um, yeah, a flag. I'm not sure what is easier for non-developers. I'll, I'll, I'll go with flag from now on. Um, okay, so I'll click edit right here. And this is the transition session greeted equals to true. And there's three, um, this is a condition. So there's three types of properties, a user, uh, current user session, and temporary dialogue context. Uh, so we want to say hi like once a day, um, not just like once in the lifetime of a user. So user is not really appropriate in this use case. And temporary, you usually don't need to worry about that too much. Um, so in this case, it's just session. 
and you just pick your your variable name, you can think about this as uh, as a tag name. So you just like tag it with greeted. And then um, this, hopefully we can do better, but for the moment, it's just uh, it's just JavaScript. Uh, and you could just copy this uh, straight off from, from what I've done and reuse this everywhere and it would work exactly like a tag. Um, and then when this happens, we transition to uh, a node, uh, to this greet node. Uh, sorry, when it doesn't happen, we transition to this greet node. And in this greet node, uh, how we handle setting this, this tag is we go to on enter here and uh, let me just add one. I'm going to click execute code here. So in on enter, I added an action and this action will set a variable. And this is really just like adding a tag. And uh, the type would be session, like we saw right here. And the name is greeted. This needs to be the same. So this is like our tag name. And then we just set this to true. And for if anybody's a developer out there, this is being set as a string. That's why I used that notation earlier. So I'm going to add action. And this is really all you need to do to have a counter. Um, hopefully we can have tags in the future or, or make it so easy that it's it's uh, it's the same thing in people's minds. And I hope this can be uh, part of every chatbot platform, at least that uses a flow um, editor like this. And that's all you need to greet a user only once per session. And um, right, so that's about it for accessibility. My next point is keeping code away from your design. All right, so I'm going to go inside my Rover pictures flow right here. And I'm going to close the emulator. And so we, we have this, uh, this box, uh, sorry, this, this flow with all of these nodes or boxes. And um, you don't see any code here. And it's because we call the code from within a box, uh, in this specific case, uh, within check day right here. And what we do is um, just quickly, uh, this is a stock filling. So this, uh, this makes sure, this ensures that we get a date no matter what from uh, the user input. And once we have the date, we want to call the NASA API uh, for that date and check to see if there's an image. And if there is, assign it. Uh, so this is, this is quite complicated. This is not meant for a conversational designer, I would imagine. Um, so what I want to show you is that you could actually like just build this flow and you don't really need to add the code yet. So you can just build the flow and then go to your developer, tell him, hey, look at this Rover Pictures flow. In check day, I want you to assign uh, an image URL to a variable. And you could even tell him, um, right in this case, like Rover image URL. Just assign it to Rover image URL uh, if it exists for that date. And then the developer can go ahead and, and do this. Uh, and, and you don't really need to worry about um, about the actual code yourself. So I'm going to click check day here, and I'm just going to quickly show you how it works. So in get rover images here, I'm going to click edit. And um, all it does here, action to run, is it just um, you just select the function that your developer has created, and it will I'll decline. It will magically appear right here. And then it will ask you for action parameters. Uh, if this is too complicated, just ask a developer to add it. They, they should be able to figure this out. Uh, but basically, we have we have a shorthand. Uh, we always put slots uh, directly inside of session with the last value. So in this case, earth date and dot value. Uh, this might be a bit complicated, but if you do it once or twice, you kind of remember what it is. Uh, but developers are there for that otherwise. So I'm going to click Cancel. And I'm just going to quickly show you uh, if there are any developers. I don't know how many developers are listening in. Um, we have a code editor right here. It's all integrated. Um, and within actions here, uh, you can see the get rover images.js. So what an action is, is just something that you can call from the flow editor. Um, so if you are a Node.js developer, it's super convenient if you want to build something very quickly. Uh, you just uh, create something like new function. 
um, and then create the current bot like this. So you just create a function, and then it has boilerplate for you. Uh, you can call pretty much, you can load pretty much whatever um, JavaScript library that you would want. And um, the important thing here is the the comment section. And uh, you have a category, you have a title here. Uh, so what you pick as title and category is what will show up uh, within the flow editor here. So once you finish your function, you give your category and your 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 function name and everything to um, to your conversation designer, and then they can come here and then they can. Oh, I think I forgot to save. Yeah, uh, uh, Patrick. Yeah, I we got. Yeah, we got uh, ten more minutes. Just a small heads up. Okay, I have ten more minutes. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly save and go back to the flow editor. Um, all right, where was I? So in check day here, then all you need to do is go to execute code and new function should appear here like this. And it has these parameters which you could fill in. Uh, so it's very simple. You get the code away from uh, the flow, but at the same time, you get to see where it happens. And so long as there's a mutual understanding of um, what the memory variable names are, uh, then it should be easy to uh, manipulate. All right, so my next point is, I don't know if I'll be able to go through everything. Don't reinvent the wheel with input validation. So I think I've seen this elsewhere as well. Um, slot filling uh, should be everywhere, in my opinion. Um, this is when you, you do input validation by using uh, entities. Um, let me just create one very quickly. So you just drag uh, from here, slot filling. And all you have to do is you pick uh, the intent. And then you pick the, um, the entity that you want, uh, the slot, sorry, uh, in this case, Earth date. And uh, you can ask a question. So if they haven't already inputted the information, we'll say this. Um, let me show you the existing one here at its skill. Uh, so which day would you like to get pictures from? And message to send when uh, user input is invalid right here. And you can always, when I was talking about extensibility in the past, um, I was talking about uh, this right here. So uh, you could ask your developer to go create an action and that makes sure uh, this is okay. So in my case, I didn't have it because I want to keep it simple, but uh, obviously if, if you ask for a uh, Marsh Rover picture from a hundred years ago, there was no Marsh Rover in people's minds probably at that time. So um, so you'd want to validate between the dates, uh, ideally, and just immediately tell them, hey, dude, this is not a right date. Uh, you could do that as well. Um, all right, so I'm gonna click cancel here. And yep, that's about it for slot filling. Um, let me go to my next point, which is uh, proofreading. So proofreading is kind of tedious. Uh, <laughs> So we built a tab for this right here uh, under content. So it's just under flows. And you know, as, as a designer, you probably won't go here very often. Um, it's useful to figure out maybe what you were using before as content and what you are no longer using. So usage will be set to zero at that time. Um, Dali, you can stop me five minutes before if, if uh, if yeah, want, uh, we got comment. five more minutes, but great, great. So I know a lot of people are going to be watching this at home because this is an amazing and amazing workshop. So I want to let you finish it, but you got to finish it within a few minutes because we okay. have an amazing team from Core okay. coming up next. Okay. All yeah. right. Thanks. Great. Thanks, um, Jason. Okay. So I'll just clean over this. I, I think everybody should always have a list somewhere that is user accessible for uh, anybody, customer service, sales, whatever, whoever is going to need to proofread and make sure that everything you wrote uh, makes sense and is OK. Um, everybody should have this. No excuses. <laughs> All right. And um, the next thing is uh, contextual intent. Uh, the implementation might be a little bit different, but the interesting thing, um, interesting thing about intent detection is that you could split it off uh, depending on where a user is in a conversation. Um, and I think everybody should. Uh, have this functionality enabled. So the way it works is you just uh, go to natural language understanding here, and you can just give it a context. And 
go back into flows and within here you could create an action that would set the context. And so within this node, uh, whatever a person would write, we just um, we just check the intents that are listed under this context, which just improves accuracy and it's so easy to do. Uh, it's it's just a no-brainer. Um, this might not be the only way to do this, but you need to have a way to do this, in my opinion. Um, all right. And the last point uh, is templating. And um, the way you can do this in BotPress right now is, so this is about copy and pasting. So if you have a part, if you, if you want to iterate a lot, if you want to create something for, if you're, especially if you're creating something for clients, you'll want to have a chatbot that you can reuse over and over. Um, so the way we do it is we just have export functionality here. So you're just basically copying and pasting your bots. Um, and then within a bot, uh, you could add code to redirect a user from uh, one bot to another. Uh, if you wanted to use it not for uh, not as an agency, but for um, for internal use, uh, that would be how to do it. So, um, all right. <laughs> Hopefully, I didn't go over too quickly. Any questions or suggestions? Yeah, um, we got uh, two questions. So we got two okay. minutes left, I think. So let's let's go and uh, ask those questions. Uh, Bassam, ask a question. Uh, how many language does your platform support? Okay, um, <laughs> I will have to get back to you on that. A lot of a lot yeah. a lot lot of uh, okay. languages. Yeah, um, uh, I can answer. Yeah. I yeah. can answer. Oh, you can. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when you load BotPress by default, it adds a uh, uh, eleven uh, language by default. But you can you can run your own NLU server, and you can extend this to like a lot more uh, language. So you 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 need to search for uh, specific models, and uh, yeah, and you're good to go. So you need to to load your own NLU uh, platform. We yeah. get another question. I from, see that from Gaetan Brasso here. Uh, he's asking, how does the NLU NLP manage remembering the context when it might be a confusing conversation for the bot? Example, what is Paul Revere email? Uh, do you see the question in the chat? Uh, maybe yeah. you want to take that. Uh, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, manager. Well, actually, um, you know what? I think we have a minute left. So why don't you answer that question in the, uh, uh, in the chat? In the okay. Chat. okay. And uh, I just want to say this has been an amazing presentation. And then a lot of people are going to watch this later on because this is some really valuable information. Uh, and they're probably just going to watch this and slow it down so they can follow along as you're doing what you're doing. Uh, I think it's amazing that you are an uh, open source platform. And some of your clients are amazing. Uh, Sus, uh, Deloitte, Kia, uh, 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 Zoom. This is an amazing lineup of clients. So is there anything we can look at or talk to that from one of these clients that can that built on BotPress? Um, we do have internal client, uh, and I can, what I can say is they are part of the Forb uh, 100, but I wow. can, uh, yeah, I cannot say their <laughs> name. Yeah, but uh, one, uh, one specific, uh, one specific bot we have built, it's uh, from the Gouvernement du Québec, Government of Quebec, uh, for the COVID response. So uh, this bot is run by BotPress, and in, in Quebec, we got like a special French, it's not like the authentic French. So we are building our own NLU to understand those specific case. <laughs> so yeah, I can talk about this. But uh, this, this has been fantastic. And I hope you guys stick around here in the chat and answer some of the questions. Uh, I see a few more coming in. Yeah. And uh, once again, thank you very much, BotPress. Mm -hmm.